We're here to fight them, aren't we? No, we're here to defeat them. Bonjour, mes amis. Normal, c'est une embuscade. Les Anglais! Hunter! King George, frogface. the honor of surrendering my ship, sir. Horatio Hornblower, acting lieutenant of his Britannic Majesty's frigate, indefatigable. Mr. Hornblower, where are the rest of my men? Lieutenant Dubois? They met with an accident ashore, but they are unharmed. Do you want this one below, sir? You have my sword. I will not attempt to escape. I have already lost my ship. I will not compound my shame by breaking my word. Today, the luck was with me, sir. Make sail for Gibraltar, Mr. Hunter. We will rejoin the Indy. Aye, aye, sir! Plan worked out handsomely, didn't it, Mr. Hunter? Aye, it did. With some luck, it did. Ah, well, he is lucky, our Mr. Hornblower. He's got the devil's own luck. And we should make a tidy profit if those horsons of price clerks don't try to cheat us of it. Which they might well do if they find out how we cheated to win. Sour bastard.
worth cheering us, sir. Thank you, Matthews. Keep your eyes on the job. Helm a lee. Uh, sir. Let fly! Douse the stysol! Come back on those halyards! And let go! The capture of Le Reve was the first successful action this squadron has taken against French or Spanish ships in the entire six weeks of blockade. Your plan was good, your execution excellent. Thank you, sir. By my reckoning, though, Mr Hornblower, it has made you somewhat richer. That's why you wanted the indefatigable hid out of sight, isn't it? Not at all, sir. So that her captain and her officers and her men would not have a share in your fortune. Sir, I do protest. That was not my intention. The captain is jesting, Mr Hornblower. I see, sir, nevertheless. How much do you think the Le Reve is worth, Mr Bracegirdle? A good £4,000, sir. Makes you richer by a thousand, Mr Hornblower. Ever had a thousand pound? A thousand? No, sir, not even a hundred. Oh, well, at least you'll be able to spend some of it on a new uniform. I can recommend Cutler and Gross in Portsmouth. They'd be very happy to deprive you of some of your riches. Portsmouth, sir? Portsmouth. They want me to... I think they request and require you to. Yes, sir. Uh, request and require me to take Lareve to England, to Portsmouth. She is to be purchased into the service as a... dispatch vessel, the utmost... expedition. England, sir? Yes. England, boy. A big, damp, foggy island nor nor east of Ushant. Think you can find it? Uh, yes, sir. Good. You sail tomorrow. However, before you slip your moorings, Mr Hornblower, I think you will find here a much sterner test. Their Excellencies, Major General Sir Hugh and Lady Dalrymple request the pleasure of Sir Edward Pellew and... Acting Lieutenant Horatio. Dinner. Government House. Dinner. Bet you wish you had that new uniform now, eh, Mr. Hornblower? What do I do if they ask me to carve, Miss Nanta? Well, I doubt they'd risk your ruining their dinner. Yeah, try these. Well, if they do, uh, remember, carve away from the bone. Venison, thick slices, mutton, medium, beef, thin. And uh, try not to saw at the chicken. Hmm. Thank you, sir. Venison. Thick. Venison thick. thick. Yeah. Mutton medium, beef. Well, they won't have venison, will they? No. Jib's been beleaguered two years now. The main dish will probably be monkey. Monkey? Hmm. Um, rock ape. And monkey you mince with a sort of a... Chopping motion. And monkey mince chopping motion. <laughs> oh, thank you, Mr Hunter. Most helpful. Ah, yes. Well, what you could do is stuff them with some of the surplus food. That'll take out the slack and uh, give your starving friends a treat. I hear Sir Hugh keeps an uncommon fine table. Perhaps you would share your good fortune with us. Oakum. Oakum. Sticking plaster, pads of oakum. Excuse me. Introduce Acting Lieutenant Horatio Hornblower, Captain of Le Rev. Good evening, Mr. Hornblower. Sir Hugh, Lady Dorothy. Captain? Oh, that puppy. Are you entrusting me to a mere babe, Sir Hugh? <laughs> Your Grace, if I may present Sir Edward Pellew, Captain of the Indefatigable, and Acting Lieutenant Hornblower, Her Grace, the Duchess of Forthdale. Look at the lad. He's like a goose on a green. Any second now, he'll be hissing at me. <laughs> oh, sorry, Your Grace. Oh, don't be, Mr Hornblower. 
I expect you're right proud of yourself getting a ship at your age. Uh, gentlemen, uh, my chef is of a combustible temperament. Uh, let us not keep him waiting. Your Grace. Your health, my lady. Yes, your health. Your Grace. At last, Sir Edward, I was choking. Mm -hmm. Oh, oops, I'm forgetting my manners. To you, Sir Hugh. And to the lad and me having a safe voyage home. <laughs> oh, I hope your cellar boasts as good as this, Mr. Hornblower. My cellar? On your ship. You have to keep your passengers happy, don't you? Passengers, Your Grace. You have been given the honour, Mr. Hornblower, of bearing Her Grace back to England. Yes. Yes, you sail with one of England's luckiest captains, Your Grace. Oh, why? Because he's got to cart me back to England. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that too, yes. But while England's pride, the great ships of the line, and her frigates were beating up and down these coasts, searching for the Spaniards and finding nothing but pilchards, <laughs> Mr Hornblower here puts into shore with a couple of men, takes a French ship, her captain, and the entire crew, yes. with the exception of those he put to the sword, of course. I had many more than a couple of men, Your Grace. Mr. Hornblower, you have the chef's masterpiece, I believe. Be so good as to carve it. Oh, it's suffered enough, Mr. H. You don't have to kill it again. <laughs> He's a lucky dog, that hornblower, eh? He'll be tucking to the capons, roast beef, plum duff. Don't you envy him, Mr. Hunter? No, sir. Beef and biscuits does me fine. You uh, sail with Mr. Hornblower tomorrow, do you not? Yes, sir. It goes without saying that he can depend on your wholehearted support. I am the king's man, sir. I follow my captain's orders. <sighs> yes, I was stuck in Florence when the French marched in, Sir Edward. So, I made my way to Leghorn, bribed a coaster to bring me here, and then, uh, well, bullied Sir Hugh here into getting me a passage home. <laughs> I hear the uh, statuary in Florence is very fine, Your Grace. Somewhat naked, but very fine indeed. Oh, statuary my ass, Sir Edward. I were there for my late husband's business. Keep those pesky Florentinos in line. You see, the Duke of Wharfdale owned mills, and my father used to manage them. Well, that's how I caught the Duke's eye. At least that's what my friends say. My enemies say I caught somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> Your Grace, gentlemen, ladies, the king. The king. The king. The king. As for the enemy, may the dons never leave their bolt hole in Cadiz. Oh, then a bumper to the don, Sir Edward. But I doubt the Spanish will leave Cadiz for all their alliance with the French. They'll sit out the war and then sail forth to congratulate the winner. <laughs> Perhaps. What is your opinion, Mr. Hornblower? Why have such a force and not use it? I believe they will come out to fight. 
And you hope you will be there when they do, don't you, Mr. Hornblower? Indeed I do, Your Grace. There's two swivel guns on each side. We won't be able to put up much of a fight, sir. We won't put up any fight, Mr. Hunter. We will run. We'll head due south out of Gibraltar, Matthews. Put some sea between ourselves and any frog privateer lurking in the Algeciras before we head west. Oh, Once through the Straits and off Tarifa, we'll set a course nor nor west for Cape St. Vincent. Hold the hold! Captain Pell, you're coming aboard, sir. And uh, a lady, sir. Nice dress, sir. Good looking. Don't froth at the mouth, Styles. You seen a woman before, man? Six bloody months, I haven't. You call this a ship, Mr. H? Welcome aboard, Your Grace. Oh, I've frit out my wits crossing Thames in this. <laughs> She's safe enough, Your Grace. Mr. Hunter will show you to a cabin. Thank you. Mom. Mr. Hornblower. Port Admiral gave me these. They're for the Admiralty. They contain information worth more than the whole of Jarvis's squadron. Should you be boarded or even threatened with boarding, these go to the bottom of the sea. Aye, aye, sir. Well, wind is set fair. I say, Mr. Hornblower. <clears throat> Your Grace. I'm used to roughing it, but, um, but I can hardly unbutton myself in that damn cupboard. Could you swap me your cap? I believe Mr. Hornblower has already given you his cabin, Your Grace. It is the best I can offer, Your Grace. Oh, there I go again, putting my foot in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I do apologise, Mr. H. Well, I'm sure you want me out the way so you can sail the damn thing. Sir Edward, how can I ever thank you? No, not at all, Your Grace. Not at all. She's all yours, Mr. Holmler. Good luck, sir. What are you staring at? All hands to the windlass. Do you want to waste this wind? All hands to the windlass! Mom. Disturbing you, Your Grace. I was wondering, would you do the honor of joining me for dinner? Oh, booger dinner. When is the storm going to end? A storm, Your Grace? We have a fair wind and a calm sea. Oh, leave me alone. Thick, sir. You'll be thicker by morning. Alter course, Matthews. Due west. We can't risk not clearing Cape St. Vincent. Aye. Plenty of sea room, sir. To alter course will only delay us. Thank you, Mr. Hunter. When I need your opinion, I'll be sure to ask for it. Alter course, Matthews. Aye, aye, sir. She's uh, quite some woman, that Duchess, isn't she, sir? What's that got to do with altering course? <clears throat> Nothing, sir. My eyes.
Good morning, Mr. Hunter. Stop it. There. It's a two decker, sir. The San Nicholas. Eighty four guns. Mr. Hunter, find the French colours. The Rev's colours, man. Run them up. The Dons might not wish to fire on their allies. Aye, aye, sir. It's a poor ruse, but it might buy some time. This fog would hold for five hours or five minutes. Mr. Hunter, what sail did the San Nicholas have? To gallants and topsails, sir. Very well, take in the topsail. The wind is fair, and, sir. And ease the sheets. I wish to slow her down, Mr. Hunter. Aye, aye, sir. Keep her steady, Matthews. Aye, aye, sir. You're hoping the Spaniards will pass us by. Hope is the word, Matthews. Hope and a prayer that this fog holds. Styles. In the stern, if you please. Inform me if any Don sniffs us too close. Sir. How many guns would you say, Mr. Hunter? Oriente. Guns, 74, sir. So if it came to matching broadsides, I expect we would lose. But it would be a damn close run thing, don't you think, Stars? Damn close, sir. 
Took him at least a minute to sink us. Mr. Hunter, go below, find what French clothes you can, pass them around the crew. No man is to show his face above decks unless he looks like a frog. Aye, aye, sir. All droid, get aft. Mr. Hunter has clothes for you. Aye, aye, sir. Say no to that Shh. dinner now. What? Have I said something? It appears we are surrounded by the Spanish fleet, Your Grace. I would respectfully suggest that you keep to your cabin. What? And miss all the fun? For your own safety, ma'am, and dare I say it for ours. What is it, all right? Mr. Hunter's compliments, sir, and you might want to put these on. Uh, very well. Take it to the quarter deck. Tell Mr. Hunter all men to keep their own clothes beside them in the event we are taken. I don't want us all to be hanged as spies. Aye, aye, sir. Trying to pass yourself off as a Frenchman, aren't you? Well, I would respectfully suggest that a well dressed woman on your deck might add to that impression. As Your Grace pleases. Do you think you'll slip the day, Gos, Mr. H? The odds are long, Your Grace even for a gambling man. The breeze is freshening. We won't have refuge in the mist much longer. Mr Hunter's compliments, sir. The wind's getting up again. Look. Keep it steady, Matthews. Aye, aye, sir. At least the ports are closed, sir. Mr. Hunter, have Stars and Aldrod load the swivel guns with case. And to make it look like they're cleaning the guns, not loading them. Stars, Aldrod, starve at midships. Monsieur! Identify yourself, s'il vous plaît. The Rev, en route pour Cadiz. Looks like they're sending a boat, sir. Nous avons l'honneur de prêter l'assistance à notre confédéré estimé et valiant. He's offering us his assistance now. God damn him to hell. Sir, the boat's in the water. Stand by your gun. Fire on my order. Damn, they're everywhere. Sir, they're up to something, sir. They're signalling, sir. But what are they damn well signalling? She's opening her ports, sir. Le rêve, on must surrender. Je ne comprends pas. You know who you are? Surrender? Oh, we fire! Mais pourquoi? Nous sommes français! So, they're both in range. All droid, all down at colours. Aye, aye, sir. Mr. Hunter, get everyone out of these damn costumes. Let's be taken for Englishmen, eh? Aye, aye, sir. A 
I must go below, Mr. Hunter. The deck is yours. I'm so sorry, sir. It was a valiant attempt. But it failed. Your Grace must excuse me. What have you got there? They are dispatches from Gibraltar. I must ensure they do not fall into the wrong hands. Give them to me. How can I do that? If you get captured, what'll happen to me? You'll be transferred to a neutral ship or a neutral port, and then... Aye, and then? You will be returned to England. Uh, no, Your Grace, they will search your baggage. I have orders. You have information that'll be more useful to the Admiralty than at the bottom of the sea. Give them to me. If they found these documents on you, your rank will not save you from the noose. I have as much right to risk my life for my country as you do. But how will you hide them? My skirts, where else? Who will dare search there, eh? Who is it? Oh, sir. Come in. Diggles are coming below, sir. <laughs> It's all right, Mr. H. Lieutenant Diego Romero. At your service, sir. Do I have your surrender? Acting Lieutenant Horatio Hornblower of the Britannic Majesty's Frigate, indefatigable. At your service, sir. Well, Mr. Hornblower, your ruse almost succeeded. Unfortunately for you, there was an officer on the San Isidro who knew Larev and the manner of her capture. You play the rules of war very loose, sir. I play to win, sir. But here you are. Who is this lady, sir? Her Grace, the Duchess of Wharfdale. Muy encantado de conocerle. Uh, teniente... Romero. Romero. Encantado. I never knew she spoke Spanish. We will take La Rev, Mr. Homblow. I'm sure my captain will be delighted to entertain a duquesa. However, you and your men will be put ashore. I am sure we will be able to find you a prison to keep you safe for the rest of the war. Don't bet on it, mate. Hey!
Kennedy. No. no. Go away. Go away! We must get out of here. Or we'll end up like him. We will get out of here, Mr. Hunter. And we'll take him with us. How? He's lost the use of his mind and the use of his legs. Well, God knows how he ended up in here and in this state. But he was a midshipman on the Indy, just like you and I, Mr. Hunter. He was captured in action. Are you saying we should leave one of our own behind? No. But it will make our escape much harder. And success that much more satisfying. Oh. escape. And we need to know how many guards there are. Never escape. I'd rather try than not. Five times I tried. Got further away from England every time. I should have saved myself the grief. But didn't you feel better for trying? No. Because the last time I tried, they locked me up in a hole in the earth for a month, with no room to stand up or lie down. Now leave me alone. Because you've given up. You wanted to die. No use thinking of him. I will not leave one of my men behind. No, he's not one of your men, is he? And if he slows the rest of us down, then what's the Mr. point? Mr. Kennedy is one of the Indefatigable's midshipmen, Mr. Hunter. What I heard was he had a fit, Mr. Kennedy, during a night attack. And you had to knock him down in order to stop him getting the rest of you killed. What sort of a midshipman is that? You were not there. You do not comprehend the circumstances. Hmm. We do not leave without him. Aye, aye, sir. Aye. Anyway, before we concern ourselves with Mr. Kennedy, we must first consider how we get out of here. How do you read our situation, Mr. Hunter? What do you mean, sir? Well, how many guards are there? Well, that's clear enough. What are their weapons? Their, we their officers, their morale, their hours of duty, their quarters when they're not on duty. Mm. We have work to do, don't we? <laughs> Archie, it's all right, Archie. Archie, it's all right. Shh. Archie. It's all right. I was having a fit, wasn't I? I had not been troubled by them. Not until you came. Archie. Oh, I will not go back to the Indy. Do not ask me to. Sir. They think we should be doing something. Doing something? I oh, see. Not just uh, sitting about. 
We are sitting about until Mr. Kennedy is fit to escape with us. Well, some don't think he will get fit, sir. But Mr. Hunt has counted all the guards. He says there's never more than four on a watch. Now, he says we could take four easily. I mean, there was more than that on the rev, weren't there? Once we've taken these four guards, what then, Aldroyd? What about the garrison? How many are they? I don't know, sir. You don't know. And neither do I. Until we know these things, I will not risk your life or mine in folly. We go when I say we're ready to go, not before then. Oh, sure. What on earth are you doing, Mr. Hunter? Weapons. We'll need these. Mr. Hunter, I do not doubt your courage, but... But what? You want to wait until the war's over. Mr. Hunter. with me. Well, don't just stand there gawping. Come. Is Lieutenant Hornblower, Your Excellency. Mr. Hornblower, His Excellency, Don Alfredo de Maceredo. Signora, the Duquesa has begged a favor of me that you should be allowed two hours of exercise daily. And I would be happy to allow you to accompany her on her walks. But I must ask you first to give your parole as a gentleman that you will not try to escape. Thank you, sir. I'm happy to accept and to give you my word. However, sir, I must inform you that outside the hours of my parole, I consider it my duty to attempt to return to my ship and my country. <laughs> so long as you do not try to murder me in my bed, sir. I wish you every luck in your attempt. Come here, Your Grace. Well, it seems the Dons had a battle off Cape St. Vincent. So the ship that was taking me to Lisbon had to run back to Cadiz. They dropped me off here like a cask of beef gone off. Your Grace, I must ask. The dispatches. Oh, I gave them up in exchange for a good room. <laughs> Don't worry, Mr. H. They're hidden. Safe and sound. Thank you, Mr. H. I can see I will enjoy our conversations. Our conversations? Yes, every day, five o'clock. Grace cannot expect my presence here indefinitely. I consider it my duty to escape as soon as I can. Oh, yes, as you told Don Maceredo. And, uh, what about your dispatches? Well, they will come with me, ma'am. Will they? The Dons will have no compunction about rifling your petticoats. So, we will converse, exchange opinions, debate. When you are an admiral, Mr. H, and in society, that is what will be expected of you. Not just your tacks and your jibs and your vast bare hearties, but conversation, quips, sallies, anecdotes and the like. You do have opinions, don't you, Mr. H? No. No razors, neither.
How was your walk? Interminable. <sighs> Fresh air. Attractive company. Very fine. Almost makes it worthwhile sitting the war out, doesn't it? The presence of the Duchess alters nothing. We'll escape when we can. Mm. And if she can be the means of facilitating that escape, then all to the good. If you say so, sir. And your little beauty. It's the fella. It's going back. It's going back. I'm stuck. <laughs> has allowed me to pick some fruit for you from his orchard. Your grace is too kind. Oh, stuff. It's the least I can do. Well, come on, men. Three cheers for her grace. Hip, hip. Hooray. Hip, hip. Hooray. Hip, hip. Hooray. Come on, Mr. Hornblower. We won't be bought with this muck, lads. It's English beef we want. An English beer! Get it sitting here. He's a lucky dog, he is, eh? He's thinking on something, Mr. Hornblower. <laughs> You'll mark my word. He's thinking on something, but it doesn't concern us. It's how he can board her ladyship there. That's what he's thinking on. No work for you today, Horatia. Do you have a sweetheart in England, Archie? Archie. Archie. Archie! Archie! Guard! Guard! And I get help. Why? Archie. What's happened to him? Starvation. Well, why? We gave him the same rations as us. But he didn't eat them. Why not? Why didn't you tell me? I assumed you knew. What is this? He's dying!
Archie, why did you do this? Mr. Hornblower, what's happened? He hasn't been eating. He starved himself to death, and I didn't notice. I didn't notice because I was too busy promenading on cliffs having conversations. The crown of the earth doth melt, my lord. A wizard is the garland of the war. Archie, what are you saying? Shush, shush, shush. Don't fret yourself. Shh. Nothing left remarkable beneath visiting moon. What was he saying? It's delirious. No, 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 it wasn't like that. It was from something. You're going to drink, you're going to eat, and you're going to get better. And then we're going to get out of here. No. Or don't you want to get back? Hmm? Stand on the deck of the Indy. Hear the wind in the rigging. And hear how Horatio Hornblower rescued his shipmate from prison. It wouldn't be like that. It would be just like that. You'd do just the same for me if I were in your shoes. But you're not. And you never would be. Archie, I won't survive if you don't help me. None of us will. You don't need me. You're one of us. We don't leave unless you do. room for a good man. Excuse me. <coughs> Gentlemen. Well, I wouldn't worry about Mr. Hornblower, old Roy. He'll be busy for an hour or two. Good. I shall ask the innkeeper immediately. Roast beef, perhaps, ham and eggs, a trout or three. Hurry, show. There's something I have to... Ah, don't worry about a thing. Let's just get you back on your feet again, eh? No, listen to me, Hurry, show. It's the Duchess. She isn't a Duchess. She might be Cleopatra. 
She's no duchess. Archie, what are you talking about? Cleopatra over Antony's body. Lady Macbeth. Beatrice Gertrude. She's an actress. Oh, you're raving. No, I'm not. Her name's Catherine Cobham. And you drew Elaine like it was my home. My word on it, Horatio. She's an actress. I would be honoured by your presence at dinner tonight. I have a guest, Colonel Etienne de Vergès of the French army. Thank you, sir. Ah. Don't forget to bring us back a few scraps, sir. Uh some fruit. <laughs> so, Mr. Hornblower, her grace tells me that you were careless enough as to sail your ship straight into the middle of the Spanish fleet. I must protest, sir. Those were not my words. But that was your meaning. Come, Colonel, a truce prevails here. Fog and wind can make fools of any man. <laughs> No, I meant no offense to Mr. Hornblower, Your Excellency. And besides, I was going to thank him. If he had not made his lucky rendezvous, we wouldn't have the pleasure of Her Grace's company tonight. It is some years since I was in London, but I believe, madam, we may have met before. I don't recall it, sir. Did you find London pleasing? After a fashion. I confess that, compared to Paris, I, I found it dirty and crowded. The food, well... <laughs> but your theatre, on the other hand, second to none. Is it true there was an engagement of Capes and Vincent recently, sir? There was. Do you wish to embarrass a Spanish gentleman in front of his guests? The rivals, madam. That was one of the plays I saw. I hear it as a sad piece. Oh, no, madam. Most comical. Oh, I prefer tragedy. But it is more than a comedy. It is a play about deceit. You know better than me. I'm not often in London. I didn't like that froggy gent, Mr. H. Not at all. He seemed to like you. I've no idea why. Perhaps because you were in the play he saw. The Rivals, was it? Or perhaps it was Macbeth. Though I do believe you would have made a fine Lady Languish, Miss Cobble. Do you deny it? Why should I? But I don't understand. Why? Because I want to go home. But this whole... this charade, the Duchess of Wharfdale... She exists, exactly as I played her. Where are my dispatches? Hidden. Give them to me. Am I suddenly untrustworthy because I don't have a title? You are untrustworthy because you lied. The dispatches. Who is it? De Vergès. May I come in? Follow my lead. I didn't know you were already entertaining, madam. Oh, two prisoners keeping it short of company, that's all. Two very interesting prisoners. The actress who pretends to be a duchess 
The boy who pretends to be a captain. I take offense, sir. It is, of course, an excellent way of gathering information. The Duchess and the English naval officer whose ship just happens to sail into the Spanish fleet. You give him too much credit, sir. <laughs> Do I? I wonder what the penalty for spying is here. Death for him, certainly. And for you, Miss Cobham, in the New Republic of France, the guillotine does not discriminate between sexes. I confess, sir. You confess what, madam? To my foolishness for trusting this boy. Had I known he would sail me into a nest of dons, I can assure you I would still be resting in comfort at Gibraltar. Ah, oh, this is such a dull post to be imprisoned on. I have no one for company, except an old aristocrat and a callow youth. It does me such good to speak with a man at last. But to whom do I talk? The Duchess or the actress? <laughs> Both the actress and the Duchess want to go home. Let us say you are talking to the woman. Horatio, are you still here? But your grace. Go to your cell, Horatio. What's wrong, Horatia? Just planning our escape, Archie. What do you want? Your lack of civility does you no credit, sir. How is your friend, Colonel de Vergesse? He is not a friend. You are more than friendly. I did what was necessary to preserve my alias. It was lucky for you that you had such a valuable bargaining card to hand, wasn't it? Oh. You still have them? Uh, clearly. It is lucky for you that last night I had another card to play. At least it brought his silence. How could you? What is it to you? Are you jealous? You completely misunderstand me. If I resisted de Vergès, he would announce my secret, which would lead to my arrest as a spy and the discovery of your precious dispatches. So I sacrificed some small, insignificant things, such as my pride and my self-respect. Your Grace. Miss Cobham, I'm sorry, I spoke hastily, but had you told me at first... Would you have given me a passage? Would you have entrusted His Majesty's secrets to an actress? Ma'am, please. I would have been honoured to have you on board my ship, whether you were the Duchess of Wharftail or Katie Cobham or any woman seeking refuge. But the dispatches, no. And now? Now that I know you, I would be grateful if you would keep them for me. What? You expect me to cart the dumb things around in my underwear again? <laughs> if your grace would be so kind. Thank you, Horatio. At present, there's only five of us. <laughs> Mr. 
understand her. Mr. Kennedy is getting stronger by the day. He will soon be able to move. I know that you have been making plans. What information do you have as to the garrison here? I'd have thought you had the information. Seems as though you dine with them every night. Now I would like to sleep. I have bad news for both of us, Mr. Hornblower. The Duchess has left. On a sloop called the Almeria, bound for Portugal. So both our days are darker for her absence. They will be, sir. However, she left you at least a parting gift. She felt that you should learn my language. So you have here a lexicon and this book. It is the story of a man who jousts with windmills. Her grace thought that you would understand him. Something's going on, Harish, here. Yeah? Oh, no. What are you going to do? You speak Spanish, don't you, Archie? Hmm? I do a little, yes. What are you doing, Mr. Hunter? Doing? I'm getting us out of here. And how are you planning to do that? Before I tell you, I must ask you whether you are with us or not. You are dangerous close to insubordination, sir. I am only doing my duty, sir, which is to escape from here and return to fight for my country. That's right, That's right. Let us say you succeed in overpowering the guards, Mr. Hunter, without the loss of too many of the men. What then? Then we take ourselves a boat. And what if there are more soldiers to prevent you from taking yourselves a boat? Then we'll fight them. No. We will go to a part of the coast which is less well defended. North or south? Makes no difference wherever there are boats. And who can speak Spanish to ask where these boats are? <laughs> to find food, water, Clothes to disguise the fact that you are English sailors escaped from prison with the whole country in arms against you. Listen carefully. We go when I say and how I say. And we go together. Kennedy will slow us down. Kennedy speaks Spanish. <laughs> he will save our lives. Are we agreed? All right. Yes, sir. Aye, aye, sir.
A ver, ¿qué pasa? What do we do, sir? They're our shipmates, aren't they? A ver, a ver. Hold right behind you. Hunter! Not now! We are out man and out gun, it's not worth it! Afraid, are you? No! Think of the men, this is suicide! I'd rather die of a bullet than stay in here! Adam Lang! Hold your fire! Hold your fire, sir! God! Das kannst schon, Armas. Lass mich an ihm. Lass mich an ihm. Lass mich da. Matthew Skyler, take him back to the cell. Lass mich da. Da, da, komm. Da. I want to know who is responsible. I am, sir. You? I cannot believe it. Nonetheless, sir. But you gave me your parole, Mr. Hornblower. I gave it between certain hours of the day, sir. Beyond that, as I informed you, it is my duty at all times to attempt to escape and return to my ship. I do not believe you. I do not believe you would lead such a vicious and senseless assault. You would know it was doomed to fail. Give me the instigators and I will deal with them. There are no other instigators, sir. Mr. Kennedy is a friend, is he not, Mr. Hornblower? He will tell you I am not afraid to be cruel. One last time, who was responsible? Tell him, Horatio. It was me, sir. I am disappointed. Your men are confined to their cells. And you. This is all you, old droid. You bloody idiot. Captain told you not to go for it. Oh, and how is I now, eh? Cause you're bloody new. Following a sodas for brains bastard like Hunter, what do you expect? Mr. Hornblower would have got us out of here. He would. He'd have walked us down to the harbour nice and easy, found a nice little boat, sailed us all the way back home, no problem. Now look where you've got him. How is he? I don't know. Depends how long they keep him in there. Sent me nearly mad, and I could not walk for a month after. 
You must eat. Eat. Stay strong. He'll need you. Come on. Oye, tú allí abajo, despiértate. Vamos, ayúdenlo. Arriba. A few stars over here, quick. Oh, thank the Lord for that. Do I have your parole, Mr. Hornblower? You do, sir. And your privileges are returned to you. Llévenlo de vuelta a la celda. Tienen que ayudarlo. Are you all right? Yes, Archie. Apart from feeling that I've been bent in two. How's your leg, Mr. Hunter? It's well, sir. Well, well, thank you. Good. Good. Come on. Oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> What ships are they, sir? Uh, I know our ship, senor. Yours? You must tell me. It's the Indy. It's the Indefatigable, sir. It's my old ship. Ah. Your ship has chased us far inshore. 
Uh, she's not catching her, I think. No, sir, but yours is carrying too much sail. She must tack soon. The Indy will have her then. Elmer is a good sailor, senor. She will be hard to catch. Be on the race. Don't worry. She has had time to sail to a porto and back. She will have landed her cargo. She must tack now. The topsail's gone. She is lost. Look, senor. God. Will she clear the reef? Not with the topsails gone. The devil's thing will have her. We must launch boats. Try to save them. In the sea. With the fishermen, surely they would go. That would be folly. I know this beast, senor. Many have died in common since So I beg you, give me two carts, some timber and some rope, and as many people as you can muster. And so I will meet my own men. Of course. This provides you with the perfect opportunity for escape. So those men up there are dying. The water is bitter cold. The strength is ebbing from their limbs, but we can save them. They are your enemies. But she does not take sides, sir. I give you my word. And that of your men? You have my word, sir. Go. God speak.
You were safer to Porto. We came nowhere near a Porto. The captain insisted on running every time he saw an English sailor. Mom, will you allow me to ask you a question? I believe I can guess. I've guarded your dispatches. Safe and sound. Thank you, Mom. Your Grace. Oh. I have to take her below. Call the surgeon. Get her out of this. Uh, Mr. Hornblower, you, your men, and your friends, below with you too. Mr. Bowles, spirits to warm them. Double ration, if you please, sir. Aye, aye, sir. I must go back. The first opportunity. I gave Don Maceredo my parole, and I gave it for my men. You must do as your honor dictates, but I do not believe in this regard you can speak for your men. Well, sir, I promise. No, they must decide for themselves, and I would not think any less of them if they are not so punctilious in matters of honor. Come. Ah, I trust your grace is more comfortable. 
Oh, I am, Captain Pellew. But after a night on Mr. Hornblower's rowboat, I think I'd sleep easy on a perch in a parrot's cage. <laughs> <laughs> we have orders to make for England, Your Grace, so God and a fair wind willing. You should be in London before the month's end. Well, in that case, I've got something to share with you. Before the Dons took his ship, Mr. Hornblower entrusted these to my safekeeping. The Admiralty dispatches you gave me, sir. You burdened Her Grace with such matters, Mr. Hornblower? Her Grace damn well insisted. I believe they're important. Yes, I know they're important, man. Gibraltar had me searching half the Atlantic for them because you decided to go missing. Don't be so hard on him, Sir Edward. Your acting Lieutenant Hornblower is an extremely gallant and resourceful gentleman. Is he? I'm afraid he is no longer my acting lieutenant. As a result of exemplary gallantry in the fire ship attack on Gibraltar, an opinion confirmed by three captains, no less captains who would not normally agree even on the colour of an orange. His promotion was confirmed in the last dispatches. He is now commissioned Lieutenant Hornblower. Thank you, sir. Well, let's see what your men think of you. Now, Your Grace, that's the real test of a gentleman. Hmm? It would seem that Mr. Hornblower has been most unkind to you, men. He has given his parole to the Dons that he will return. More than that, he has given your parole. However, his word does not bind yours. You are free to remain here with your comrades aboard your old ship, or you can return with Lieutenant Hornblower to imprisonment in Spain. If Mr. Hornblower has given his word, that holds good for me, sir. Does he speak for all of you? He does, sir. Very well, Mr. Brace Colonel. Set course for land. We'll go in under a flag of truce. Aye, aye, sir. What will you do, ma'am? You cannot continue this in London. I have friends in high places and low. Friends who value me enough to forgive the manner of my return. In that case, I can only wish you good luck, ma'am. Don't want to run out. Horatio, I will always count you, as I hope you will count me, among those friends. In high places or low, ma'am? The highest. Mr. Hitch. Sir. Firing a salute to the Spaniards. Good luck, mate. has come concerning you, Mr. Hornblower. 
from their excellencies in Madrid. Yes, sir. The First Minister has informed me that in the recognition of your courage in saving life at the peril of your own, you and your ship's crew are to be set at liberty. You are free to go. That is what I usually understand liberty to mean. Well, thank you, sir. I am honored by Their Excellency's consideration. Mm. I wonder if Their Excellencies realize they're setting free a man who will doubtless be a thorn in their sides for many years to come. I shall endeavor not to disappoint you, sir. Mm-hmm.